वेलकम टू वी टी यू ई शिक्षण प्रोग्राम माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर वी आर कट्टी मनी असोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री बसवेश्वर इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज बागलकोट आई वुड लाइक टू एक्सटेंड माई ग्रेटिट्यूड टू दिस वी टी यू ई शिक्षण प्रोग्राम फॉर गिविंग मी एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू शेयर माई नॉलेज ऑन दिस मॉड्यूल फोर the topic assigned to me is green chemistry and alternative energy resources so the syllabus included in this topic the basic principles of green chemistry brief discussion on 12 principles of green chemistry various green chemical approaches like microwave synthesis bio catalyzed reaction phase transfer catalysis solvent free reaction their advantages and conditions synthesis of some typical organic compounds by conventional and green route for example adipic acid conventional method from benzene green synthesis from glucose para acetamol conventional synthesis and green synthesis from phenol industrial applications of green chemistry green fuel hydrogen production of hydrogen by photo electrocatalytic and photo catalytic water splitting process and application in hydrogen fuel cells construction and working of methanol oxygen fuel cell methanol oxygen fuel cell so taking h2so4 as an electrolyte solar energy introduction of solar energy construction working and application of photovoltaic cell that is pv cell so introduction <coughs> we know chemistry has played a vital role in chemical manufacturing industries which produce the products on which we depend enormously some of these include antibiotics and drugs so these medicines are required for the treatment of various ailments in fact these products are life saving polymers polymers so these include plastics used in various forms for day to day use and synthetic fibers like nylon rayon polyester etc agrochemicals these includes fertilizers pesticides etc which are essential for increasing the quality and quantity of crops then synthetic fuels are essential for the generation of energy i mean production of energy which is needed for our day to day lives synthetic dyes necessary to give a pleasing color to fabrics for day to day use day to day use all these advances particularly in drugs medicines and antibiotics have resulted in increasing the average life expectancy from 47 years in 1900 to 80 years in 2010 the quality of life become pleasant due to the discovery of cosmetics dyes and plastics all the above developments had 
some adverse side effects. The hazardous chemicals used in various manufacturing units, excess use of agrochemicals for farming and the byproducts of various industries lead led to the pollution of the environment including land, water and atmosphere. The disposal of hazardous waste created a problems. The situation due to the pollution etc. becomes so acute that various governments in most of the countries made a law to minimize the pollution. This resulted in the beginning of green chemistry. This is the beginning of the green chemistry. So what is green chemistry? What do you mean by the term green chemistry? So this green chemistry term was given by Mr. Dr. Paul Anastas, known as the father of green chemistry, father of green chemistry. So green chemistry is the design of chemical products and the process that reduce or eliminate the use or generation of hazardous substance. I would like to repeat once again. Green chemistry is the design of chemical products and the process, design of the chemical products and the process that reduce or eliminate the use or generation of hazardous substance. It reduces the use or generation of the or production of the hazardous substance. Green chemistry applies across the life cycle of the chemical products including the design of the compound, manufacture of the compound, use of the compound and ultimately the disposal of the products. Green chemistry is also known as sustainable chemistry. So this green chemistry it prevents the pollution at the molecular level is the philosophy that applies to all areas of chemistry not a single discipline of chemistry. It applies innovative scientific solution to real world environmental problems results in source reduction because it prevents the generation of pollution. This green chemistry reduces the negative impact of chemical products and the process on human health and the environment. This is very important. It reduces the negative impacts of chemical products and process on human health and the environment. It decreases and sometimes eliminates the hazards from the existing products and process. Design chemical products and process to reduce their intrinsic hazards. It designs chemical products and process to reduce their intrinsic hazards. Now look at the major pollutants, their sources and their effect on human health and environment. Major pollutants. So, what do you mean by the term pollutant? Pollutant is a substance that pollutes something, especially water or the atmosphere. It can enter the environment naturally, such as from volcanoes, eruptions, or through human activities 
such as burning coal, gasoline, diesel, etc. Here we are giving the list of major pollutants, their sources, their effect on human health and the environment. So what are the major pollutants? The first one oxides of carbon that is carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, two oxides, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. The source of production or sources of production. So these carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide are formed due to the conversion of the coal, conversion of the oil and other fuel for energy production, manufacturing and transport, biomass burning, etc. So these are responsible for the production of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. So what is the effect of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide on human health and the environment? So we know carbon dioxide has the major role in greenhouse gas effect. The increase in the temperature on this globe is due to the increase in the concentration of CO2. And this CO will affect the human health. The carbon monoxide has a tendency to form a bond with the hemoglobin to form carboxyhemoglobin. If carboxyhemoglobin is formed, it will decrease the oxygen intaking capacity of the blood. Oxygen intaking capacity of the blood if it decreases, so it leads to the formation of this disease, asphyxia. Hemoglobin has 250 times more affinity towards carbon monoxide compared to oxygen. So I repeat, hemoglobin having 250 times more affinity with carbon monoxide compared to that of the oxygen. Next one, oxides of sulfur, that is SOX you generally call. So under this sulfur dioxide, Sulfur trioxide, then sulfates. The source of production or sources of production, the conversion of a fuel containing sulfur or conversion of sulfur containing fuel, example coal, petroleum, etc. Manufacturing of a paper, pulp, municipal insulation ore smelting, metal extraction, all these will lead to the liberation of oxides of sulfur. And these sulfur dioxide has maximum destruction or deleterious effect as it damages the human lungs and also animal lungs. And it is an important precursor to acid rain. Adverse effect include the corrosion of paints, corrosion of the paints, metal, injury or death to the animal and plants. And third one, oxides of nitrogen, we call NOx oxides of the nitrogen which include nitrogen oxides, nitrogen dioxide, nitrous oxide, nitrate. Source of production are sources where you are getting these oxides of nitrogen. The burning of the fuel, biomass burning, products in the manufacture of fertilizers. So what are the effect of these oxides of nitrogen on human health and the environment? So these oxides of nitrogen forms the secondary pollutants that is PAN, peroxyacetyl nitrate and nitric acid. 
suppression of plant growth, damage of the tissues of the plants, irritation of the eyes, viral infection like, in, like influenza, nitrate from the atmosphere impairs the visibility whereas in soil it promotes the plant growth. Then comes hydrocarbons also called volatile organic compounds. Examples methane, butane, ethylene, benzene, propane. So source of production are where we are getting these hydrocarbons, evaporation from gasoline tanks, carburetors, carburetors, burning of fuels, burning of biomass, municipal landfills, microbial activities of a seaways, industrial process involving solvent ch changes that occurs. So what are the effect of these uh, hydrocarbons on human health and the environment? So can have the carcinogenic effect on human health means it causes cancer. It is prone for the cancer. Higher concentration are toxics to the plant and animals can convert into harmful compounds through complex chemical atmosphere. Some are more reactive with sunlight and some produce photochemical smog. Well, this is very important, the 12 principle of green chemistry the principles of green chemistry. The, there are 12 principles of green chemistry. The first one, prevention of waste or byproducts. We know it is better to prevent the waste rather than to clean the waste. Or in other words, you can say prevention is better than to cure. So, prevention of waste or byproducts. It is better to prevent the formation of the waste rather than to clean the waste or to clean up the waste after it is formed. An example I want to quote is the manufacture of the phenol. It is used made by benzene. using sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide. I mean, phenol is uh, manufactured by making use of benzene along with sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. The overall chemical reaction is expressed as this one. This is the overall chemical reaction. So, if you look this reaction, so our aim is to prepare this phenol, our aim is to prepare this phenol only. But during this reaction, sodium sulphate and uh, sodium sulphate is uh, formed as a byproduct. So, what happens? The chemical equation shows that one mole of benzene so that is nothing but 78 grams react with one mole of a phenol in practice and it generate 126 grams of sodium sulphate. Means for each mole of phenol form we are getting one mole of uh, sodium sulphate, it is a sulphate. This is an acceptable if there is an enough demand for sodium sulphate, if there is a demand for sodium sulphate, this reaction is, this reaction, once again, 
this reaction is acceptable but if not if there is no demand for sodium sulfate so it creates a serious problem of waste management and adds a significantly the cost meaning that this may not be the most suitable reaction for the manufacturing of phenol. If there is a suitable, I mean if there is a demand for sodium sulphate, this is an acceptable reaction. If there is no demand for sodium sulphate, then you just uh, do not go for this reaction because so it creates the problem of uh, how to dispose this sodium sulphate which is formed during the reaction. That is how to dispose the sodium sulphate and also that is a that is a cost of the chemicals that is a reactants also get included which uh, will increases the cost of the production of the phenol. Second one atom economy second principle in green chemistry very important atom economy in short it represents how much reactants are converted into a useful product. It represents how much reactants are converted into a useful product. If I say atom economy is 40 percent, it indicates 40 percent of the reactants are converted into a useful product. Rest of the 60 percent is a waste. If I say atom economy is a 90 percent, 90 percent of the reactants taken part in a chemical reaction are converted into a useful products. So atom economy that is used in synthetic process that is synthetic method should be designed to maximize the incorporation of all the materials used in the process into the final products. Whatever the reactants you are using in a chemical reaction should converted into a useful products. And this concept was first given by Mr. Barry Frost. The concept of atom economy was given by Mr. Barry Frost. And it evaluates the efficiency of a chemical reaction. It represents the efficiency of a chemical reaction or efficiency of a chemical synthesis. So here I have given two reactions. One is a Claisen's rearrangement, other one is a Witting reaction. So the atom economy for Claisen's rearrangement the atom economy for this reaction, the atom economy for this reaction is 100 percent. There is a no products, byproducts. Whereas the atom economy for Witting reaction is 20 percent, means only 20 percent of the reactants are converted into useful product. This is our useful product. This is the byproducts. So atom economy for this reaction is 20 percent whereas rest of the 80 percent is a waste or a byproduct you call. Whereas atom economy for this reaction is 100 percent means whatever the reactant taken part in a chemical reaction are converted into a useful products. And third principle, the third principle of green chemistry, the third principle of green chemistry less hazardous chemical synthesis. In a synthesis, you follow less hazardous chemical synthesis. Wherever, whenever practicable, synthetic methodologies should be designed to use and generate the substance that causes little or no toxicity to the human health, to the human health, sorry, to the human health and the environment. I repeat, wherever, whenever practicable, synthetic methodologies or synthetic methods should be designed to use and generate the substance that poses little or no toxicity to the human health and the environment. Here one example I want to quote that is the preparation of polycarbonates. 
polycarbonates can be synthesized by two ways or two methods. One is a postgene process by making use of postgene. So this uh, postgene process has so many demerits, I mean disadvantages. Postgene is uh, highly toxic, highly corrosive. It requires large amount of dichloromethane and the product formed after the reaction contain chlorine as an impurities. Whereas the same products that is polycarbonates can be synthesized by solid state process. So what are the merits of this process? What are the advantages of this process? So here we are using diphenyl carbonate synthesis without postgene, ruled out the use of postgene, eliminate the use of dichloromethane and we get high quality, highly purified form of the polycarbonate. Means the same products can be prepared either by postgene process or by polycarb that is solid state process. But if you compare these two process, the solid state process has more merits compared to postgene process. Therefore, during the synthesis, you follow solid state process rather than postgene process. The fourth principle of green chemistry, designing safer chemicals are designing the safe chemicals. The chemical synthesized should not only be safe to handle, but also should not have toxic effect. I repeat, the chemicals synthesized should not only be safe to handle, but also should not have toxic effect. I would like to quote an example of a drug having toxic effect is thalidomide. This is the drug thalidomide. This drug is used in early days to reduce the effect of morning sickness during pregnancy in women. This thalidomide, this is the drug, thalidomide drug, thalidomide drug is used to reduce the morning sickness in the pregnant woman. But what happened? Later it was discovered, it was observed that this drug causes serious birth effect in children born to the woman taking this drug. It was found that the drug has chiral drug, means uh, it has two enantiomers. One of the enantiomer, that is the right-handed molecule, has its desired effect, means uh, it reduces the morning sickness. While uh, the other enantiomer, that is left-handed enantiomer, which is responsible for the defect in the newly born child. So therefore, we have to, before to synthesize, we should know the adverse effect of the product. The fifth principle of the green chemistry, safer solvents and auxiliary substance, safe solvent for the preparation, I repeat, safer solvents and auxiliary substances. Solvents, separation agents and auxiliary chemicals are used in synthetic chemistry and uh, must be replaced or reduced with less toxic chemicals. That is the solvents, whatever the solvent, whatever the separating reagents we are using should be replaced by or should be replaced by less toxic chemicals. 
In view of the above, it is necessary to use benin solvents called green solvents. Water is uh, known as a benin solvent. Water is used as a green solvent. Some of the green solvents example water, supercritical carbon dioxide, glycol and its solution. Beside using green solvent, the reaction should be such that there is no need for purification or separation. Increase in energy efficiency, the sixth principle of green chemistry. For all chemical reactions, energy is required. The requirement of the energy should be kept to a minimum. As an example, the reactants are dissolved in a suitable solvents and the reaction mixture is heated in order to complete the reaction, the heating should be done for a minimum time. The heating should be done for a minimum time. This ensures the use of minimum energy. That is, by making use of microwave synthesis, if you prepare the compound or form of a compound by making use of microwave synthesis, so microwave synthesis definitely will minimize the time for the synthesis. And as a result, the cost of the production will be reduced. The release of the harmful byproducts or harmful gases into the environment is minimized. So therefore, for all chemical reaction, energy is required. The requirement of the energy should be kept to a minimum. Means the reactants should be heated to a minimum time or minimum period. the seventh principle of green chemistry. The use of renewable feedstock. We know non-renewable are depleting sources like a coal, coke, etc. can be exhausted continual or continuous use of this will depleting these natural resources which gives a negative aspect to the economy or growth of the country. The starting material which are obtained from agriculture or biological process are referred to as renewable like biomass biofuel are used in place of non-renewable energy sources like petrol, diesel, kerosene. You replace these with biofuels like biodiesel, etc. The concept of making all our future fuel chemicals and material from feedstock that never deplete. It is observed that nature products about 170 billion tons of plant biomass annually. Look at this. So nature will produce, nature is producing 170 billion tons of plant biomass annually of which we currently use about 3.5 percent. Only 3.5 percent of this is used for human needs. The same that is biodiesel will replace the diesel by making use of these renewable resources we can prepare the same fuel that is non-renewable resources are depleting continuous use of these non-renewable uh, fuels gives a negative impact on the growth of the country. So therefore, the dependency on that non-renewable resources should be minimized. Dependency on renewable energy sources should be increased. Reduce chemical derivatization. 
are derivatives. Chemist must aim for reducing unnecessary derivatization. Unnecessary derivatization that is use of blocking groups, protection or deprotection techniques, temporary modification, physical and chemical process in the synthetic group. So these should be minimized. So these derivatization make use of additional reagents. These derivatization use additional reagents and are wasteful and produce large amount of byproducts and waste. The principle remains chemist to change their old ways of producing chemicals with more chemical steps and additional materials. Instead of that, you have to design a new chemical and synthetic roots with less steps, which is a more desirable. In short way, you have to minimize the step, you have to minimize the reagent for the synthetic process, which will reduces the cost of the production and also reduces the elimination of hazardous substance into the environment. Use of catalyst. We know catalyst is a substance which influences the rate of a chemical reaction without undergoing any chemical change. However, it may undergo some physical changes. The use of a catalyst is well known that it can change dramatically the efficiency of a chemical reaction. Catalyst will increase the efficiency of a chemical reaction by taking the reaction in alternate path with lower activation energy and it yield or it gives the products. Catalytical reagent with greater selectivity can have a superior stoichiometric reagent. They have that more superior character to the stoichiometric reagent new catalyst and more emphasis on catalytical process is the future of the green chemistry. The future of the green chemistry depends on this catalyst. Design for degradation. So most of the chemical products and consumer items do not degrade very easily, thus causing environmental problems. After the use, if you say for example plastic bottle, after the use, if you throw into the environment, it will not undergo decomposition, it will not degrade. So this causes uh, environmental problems. So therefore green chemistry aim in designing the product development of the product so that at the end of their useful life it will break down into innocuous material. Persistence into the environment is a negative aspect of many consumer products. Example plastic products and this can be reversed by designing product which degrade in a short time that is Non-degradable plastic is replaced by the degradable plastic or degradable polymers. If you use a degradable polymers or degradable compound, after the use, if you throw into the environment, it will not persist in the environment for a long period. It will decompose into a simple products without causing much adverse effect to the environment. Real-time analysis for pollution prevention. See, analytical methods need to be further developed to allow the real-time in-process monitoring and control prior to the formation of a hazardous substance. Before the formation of a hazardous substance, we should know. If you know that analytical methods it is possible to control the formation of a hazardous substance. The green analytical methodologies 
are devices for detection of toxic products generated during synthetic process. Online monitoring of impurities or byproduct, real time analysis for a chemist is the process of checking the progress of a chemical reaction as and when it happens. And the last one safer chemical for accidental prevention that is safe chemical for accident prevention raw materials and chemical substances used in chemical process should be inherently safe that is their properties and their degradation products to be non-toxic and non-dangerous. In other words, should not thrown for the explosion. Yes, it should not be flammable, allergic to human health, causes burn to skin, etc. Green chemistry aims to stop the use of dangerous material for the health and safety of workers and the consumers. So these are the 12 basic principles in green chemistry. So next one, various green chemistry are green chemical approaches. The first one microwave synthesis. The use of microwave radiation for the synthetic process. For the synthetic process. We know the microwave synthesis is the major breakthrough in the synthetic organic chemistry where the conventional heating is inefficient and time consuming. Microwave synthesis is the new idea leads to the beginning of the green chemistry. which is used for source heating in organic synthetic reaction. In traditional method of heating, that is traditional method of chemical synthesis, which is done by conductive heating, uh, I would like to say conductive heating. See for example, if you observe this one. So this you call it as a conductive heating process where that uh, substance taken here, reactants are taken here it to be heated. So first this uh, vessel is to be heated and it impart heat to the reactants means it is time consuming. Whereas in uh, microwave synthesis the microwave irradiation I mean the radiation directly will hit the reactants. Just what I wanted to say in microwave synthesis heating of the molecule in presence of a microwave radiation. So, microwave heating will result in instantaneous localized heating of the reaction mixture. The process of heating is not dependent on the thermal conductivity of the vessel. So, what is the principle behind this uh, microwave process? Heating the reactants or materials with microwave radiation affect the superheating at ambient pressure which results into the possibility of the reaction which is not possible under conventional condition. I repeat once again, heating the reactants or materials with a microwave to affect the superheating at ambient pressure which results into the possibility of the reaction which is not possible under conventional condition. Yes. A microwave oven is used for this process. A microwave oven is used to generate the radiation. When a substance is irradiated with microwave radiation, 
So what happens? There occurs an interaction between the magnetic field of the microwave radiation and the micro uh, magnetic field of the substance. So this interaction will cause us some time, some friction and as a result heat will be generated and this causes strong internal homogeneous heating effect which results into the possibility of a reaction at a short period. So this method is also used to increase the rate or velocity of a chemical reaction. Thank you.